This video is about the feeling and flow I achieve using the Lumix GX9 and why I love carrying it around the city streets of Dublin. This isn't going to be like other YouTubers reviews, this is going to be heavy on video and heavy on photographs. I'm not just going to be sitting in my bedroom talking absolute hoop about the camera with nothing to back it up. This is all about output from the camera. One quick thing, if you have Instagram, how about giving me a follow? That's where all these photographs will end up. And it would be great to connect with other photographers over there. Let me be the first to welcome you to Dublin. If you've been before, welcome back. It's a beautiful, bustling, busy city full of people and life. And I love photographing it. Street photography is something I take a lot of pride in and getting around this city is an absolute joy. And I've been using the Lumix GX9 exclusively for my street photography work for the past month. And for you eagle-eyed viewers, yes, he did just slip his hand down the backside of her pants. Nice. What? This is a camera with soul that nearly gets everything right. Anyway, we've got loads to get through. So come along with me as I explain why the GX9 is a freak in the streets. First off the bat, I really like the sensor. It's that 20.1 megapixel sensor found on the GH5 and flagship G9. And they fit it into a body that only weighs 400 grams with a battery. The sensor renders city scenes effortlessly. Images really pop, no matter what lens I'm using. Panasonic decided to rip out the low pass filter, which was found on the previous GX series cameras. This results in more clarity and sharper images to boot. I'm a photographer who's mad with a bit of Lightroom. I get in there and I rip images apart. I push, I pull. I want to see what the dynamic range has to offer. And it's been really, really good. There's a lot of recovery in the highlights. I can boost the lows. I can pull it all around. I get a lot of creative flexibility with the raw files, which is essential for me. And for those JPEG shooters out there, the JPEGs are lovely straight out of camera. The addition of the monochrome D preset for color, it's a black and white preset. It is exceptional and I love using it. So you'll find me shooting in monochrome D and then if I want to edit that photo in color, I'll just use the raw file because I'll shoot JPEG in monochrome D and then I'll flick over to the raw file in Lightroom if I want to go that way. This is one of my favorite photographs taken with the GX9. And to be honest, it happened so sporadically. I literally span around, senior man, took a picture, his eyes were still closed. I was delighted with it. But the camera actually lends itself to being able to shoot like that because it's got dual IS built in with the camera lenses. And that just adds to the sort of ability to pull off shots that normally I would probably need sticks to get. And if you take street photographs, you know the thrill you get of seeing a moment and only having a split second to capture it. Well, this camera helps you do it. The autofocus is nice and responsive. Very, very snappy. It's a 49 area depth from defocus system, which is a contrast based system. I generally shoot in spot or face depending on the situation and, you know, the sort of composition or what's going on in the scene at the time. I find it to be very accurate and I use the back screen as well as back button focusing. All right, so let's talk about the feeling, construction and ergonomics of the GX9. The camera feels great in your hand. It feels like a premium product. The ergonomics are also quite good. I find that the grip, although small, is plenty enough for me to operate with a range of the Panasonic lenses. The construction is really only let down by not having this as a weather sealed unit. And only Panasonic will really know why they didn't add that in as a feature. It seems like an oversight and many users, many users would take a bump in price, especially because the GX9 wasn't cheap upon release to have weather sealing. So I have to say that is one major thing I do not like about the camera. Although I do not have the official attachment grip, which would probably add a lot of stability to this camera, I always make sure I have a wrist safety strap attached because when you're out in the street, somebody could bump into you. You might just lose your stability, might slip from your hand. You need to make sure it's not going to crash to the ground. The back screen is brilliant. It's a out and tilty screen, which I really prefer for street photography because I don't like having a screen hanging over the left side of the camera because people know you're taking photos then. This is a much more stealth option and one that I actually really appreciate in the GX9. And for those of you watching that are like, oh, well, you know, what about vlogging? I don't use this camera to vlog. This is a street photography or a street video camera. It's not meant to be shooting me. If I want to do that, I'll use a different camera. 
I'm a back button focuser and the AFAE lock button is recessed in it, which kind of bugs me because it's a little bit difficult to press. I have nails so I can angle and sort of get in there, but you know, if you're a nail biter, be warned if you back button focus, you're probably gonna have to be using the touchscreen, but the touchscreen functions brilliantly for focusing too, and I'm always flicking between the two. I really just wish it wasn't recessed and a bit easier to press. A nice clicky tactile button would have been a dream. This camera's ability to shoot 4K video was a giant selling point for me, although the 4K does come with a 1.25 times crop, which is not actually that big a deal for me when I'm out and about. I can see it being a big deal indoors, but if you want the sort of full width of the sensor, you can go to 1080p 60. I shot all this in the standard profile, but there are flat profiles. They added Cine D and Cine V like in a firmware update, which is very much appreciated to give you a little more flexibility in post. The dual IS is really nice and walking shots can be achieved with ease with the GX9. Overall, video quality is B E A beautiful. As photographers, what's the most important thing? And I think it's taking more photographs. It's as simple as that. It's something that we're all guilty of not doing enough of. Due to the GX9 size, it's stuck in my hand, hip, or on a harness when I'm out of the house. This results in me putting more pictures out there. It's more about expression for self. It's a camera for my life. It's a camera that I use primarily for Instagram. So it's got plenty of punch for that platform. I'm enjoying my photography more than ever and I really hope it comes across in these images. I want them to feel alive and to be able to tell stories in the frames. Okay, well, let's be honest. These aren't gonna sell for thousands and they mightn't be technically perfect for the pixel peepers out there. And I'm sure there's people that are gonna complain about the ISO and the sensor, but I love them and I love the look of them. I trust the GX9 to deliver when I'm out and it hasn't let me down yet. The camera isn't perfect though. The EVF is about as useful as a glass hammer and the aspect ratio in it blows my mind. It's a 16 by nine. It doesn't appear sharp no matter how much I change the diopter. And if I look at it quickly and flick my eye across it, I can see RGB tearing creating a rainbow of horror. And it really is pretty much unusable, which is a real shame because if it was better, I would use it all the time. I love the action on it. I love the way it can tilt up. Please excuse my French, but I think Panasonic really fucked up the EVF on this camera and it could have been much better. Thankfully, the back screen does save the day, which truth be told, isn't that tough because anything would beat out that EVF. The back screen is bright, it pops with contrast and is sharp, even in harsh daylight. Battery performance is okay. I get about 100 minutes of 4K video and 260 shots from the Panasonic official battery. And I have two Wasabi batteries that give me 180 shots and 70 minutes of roll time for 4K video. Not bad. Another great thing is it's chargeable over USB via power brick. So I also bring that with me in and around the city. So I never run out of battery. The camera has great connectivity features with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth for transferring files. It also has remote control, which is a great feature. There's a built-in pop-up flash, which is always nice in a pinch. Though one major missing thing is the no mic input. Not a big deal for me. I record mics separately and this is fine for Atmos. Just something to consider if you're looking for a camera with a mic input. I am not a big night shooter, but the performance was actually pretty good. This is at F1.7, 800 ISO and 1600 ISO for these. In a bar, very dark. I think they look nice. I'm not gonna be using it all the time, but it seems to be pretty decent performance. To summarize, the camera is perfect for me for street work. Is it perfect for everybody? Absolutely not. It's slotted in because I have lenses already for micro four thirds with my GH5. It serves a purpose to get me out and taking more photographs. And for that, I adore it. Yes, there are shortcomings, but the pros outweigh all the cons for me. I simply love the GX9. There we have it. That's my take on the Lumix GX9, specifically taking it from a street photography perspective. I hope you really enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for making it to the end. It was a pleasure to put together. It was a pleasure to take the photos. I hoped you liked them. The camera is a good performer. I have to say, I really didn't expect it to be so good, but it has really taken over from me even thinking about bringing the GH5. This thing is with me all the time when I'm out and about in Dublin city. 
If you did enjoy the pictures, why don't you follow my Instagram? That's where they all go. It would be great to see you on it. I'll follow you back. We can have a back and forth. I really enjoy sharing pictures and talking with people over on that platform. And the last thing to really talk about is would people be interested in print? I mean, the channel is based around photography and video. If people are interested in prints, I would be open to actually getting it sourced for people. I'd have to figure out the logistics and I think if I was to do it, I'd be running limited editions, really low amount of numbers, you know, like maybe five or 10 max, and then that's it, they're done. So if you are interested in that, let me know in the comments and we can take it from there maybe. I will see you on the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Been a pleasure. See you.